Hey, what's up guys? My name is Julian from SmartphoneFilmmakingPro.com and in this video I will share the top smartphone gimbal movements to spice your video up and to bring them to the next level. And without any further ado, we will start with the first movement and that one is very basic and you probably have guessed it already. That is just a straight push-in shot. So the straight push-in shot is a very basic shot and you can do this very easily. Just grab your gimbal. You can do this in the pan and follow or the locked mode or also the follow modes depending on what you want. And this shot will look best if you have some sort of foreground. If you're just pushing in in an open field like I'm doing right now, I'll just show you this as an example. So you can see there is no foreground. And if I'm pushing in very slow, then it's still looking smooth and great but it's just not nothing special to be honest. But if we pan over to this side and we can also use this foreground, so we'll just keep pushing in. And you can see that there it's just a much more dynamic shot and much more movement. And yeah, overall this just looks way better. That's the first shot. One way of spicing the straight push-in shot up is just by adding a tilt down or a tilt up to your push-in. So I'll just show you very quickly what this would look like. So I'll just start a recording and if I'm, I also have to be in the follow mode because in the pan follow this won't work. So I'm just tilting up, walking forward and then pushing down, pushing in, sorry. This is also, I think this just adds much more movement, much more depth, much more, you know, more cinematic feel to your video. So that's very simple. And you can do also the exact same thing with a push out. So if I'm starting right here, walking back, doing the exact opposite, and I can also spice this up by just tilting up, tilting down, whatever I want. I like to use these kind of shots for ending my video, but you can use them however you like. The next gimbal movement that I have for you is my personal favorite because I think it's super easy and it yeah, I think it has the best or the coolest look to it and that is the parallax and it's super easy to do. Basically you walk in one direction and you pan your camera into the other direction. I'll just show you very quickly what this will look like. So I'll just start here. I try to keep Alex in the center of the frame. I'm walking to the right and I'm panning to the left and then it has this cool orbit effect and What's really cool with the parallax is you can basically use this for every video scenario. You can use this for action sports, for holiday videos, for wedding videos, for real estate videos, basically for every type of video. And that's why I really like to use that shot. The next gimbal movement that I have for you sounds more complicated than it actually is. It's called the tilt pan parallax. And basically you're just combining all the different movements that we have already talked about. And like I said, it sounds more complicated than it is. So I'll just show you very quickly what this will look like. So I'll just start a recording. And basically I start with my camera panned up to the sky. And then I'm walking in, I'm doing a push in. And then I'm slowly panning down and then I'm doing a parallax of this tree. You can use this for real estate shots. You can use this for also if you are on a holiday and you want to shoot your resort or you know whatever. Basically there are no limits. You can use them in whatever way you would like to but it's super easy to do. Just walk in, start with panned up or you can also do this with pan down and then find some subject. Usually it will be people but this time it also worked really nice with a tree and then do a parallax and this just adds a lot of creative and dynamic movements to your shots and they will overall spice up your videos. The next mode that I have for you is called the POV shot and basically you have to have a gimbal that offers a POV mode. I'm lucky to have the Smooth Q4 so this one offers that and basically with a POV mode all the different axes are open so you can do these crazy shots and Basically with this shot, it's more than with all the other. You have to be creative, just try out different things because you can do everything. No limits are set. So I'll just make a test take right here. Usually these work best if you have some action sports or where something cool is happening, then you can spice it up even more by you know adding this kind of uh, effect or movement to it. But I will just try it right now. So if I'm doing this, you know, I think you get the picture. I will also show you some shots that I was doing with the POV mode of a parkour athlete. I think there it made more sense. 
But generally speaking, having this in your toolkit will definitely be really helpful. The next gimbal move that I have for you is the low mode. And if you have a gimbal like this that has an extension pole, then it's of course much easier to get some nice low angle shots. But basically you just have to turn your gimbal upside down and then you can get some very creative low angle shots. I like to do these in the follow mode because then I can also change the angle of my phone down there. And what's really cool, if you're using the low mode, then you can get really close to the ground and your movement will look way faster than it actually is. That's also cool for action sports stuff because you can just make it look more dramatic than it actually is. But you can also use this for all your other projects. So I'll just show you very quickly what this looks like. I'll just go back and I'll do the regular uh, push-in shot with the low mode. So that's basically it, you just have to hold it. And the gimbals these days are so smooth that they are doing all the rest. Of course, always when you're shooting with the gimbal, make sure that you bend your knees to get rid of the up and down movement. But other than that, the gimbal is doing everything else for you. The next gimbal move is an upgrade or a step up to the low modes that we have just talked about. And that is also the low mode push in, but this time we're also adding in a tilt up. And you can do this just by using the joystick on your gimbal. And I'll show you very quickly what this will look like. The difficulty with this shot is that you cannot really see the display. So you kind of have to guess if your framing is right or not. So what I'm always recommending is that you shoot with a wide angle because then you have just more more room and more room for error but i'll just show you what this looks like just start my recording and i'm slowly walking forward the difficulty with this shot is to get the perfect timing of the joystick movement and of your walking so you maybe have to do this shot a few times before you get it perfectly right and what i would also recommend is that you turn down the speed of your motors in the settings so in the dji memo app or in the zy cami app in this example and then it will be easier for you to get some very nice looking shot the next gimbal movement that I have for you is also in low mode and yeah basically this is also a combination of what we already had before so this time we're doing the low angle push in combined with a parallax shot so I'll just start a recording right now and I'm in the follow mode here so I'm walking towards Alex and I'm also circling around him and yeah this creates this parallax effect the difficulty with shooting in low mode, especially if you're using also an extension pole, is you cannot see your screen whilst you're shooting. So definitely make sure that you always check your recording after you have shot it, because sometimes this also happened to me. I just completely, you know, missed the framing. So just make sure that you check your footage and then if it's perfect, then move on. And if not, then you just have to do it a few times until you get it perfectly fine. The next gimbal movement that I have for you is the jib shot. And as the name already applies, we try to replicate of what a jib would do. And of course we cannot bring a jib with us if we are on vacation, but we can definitely bring a small smartphone gimbal. And if you have a gimbal that has this extension pole, then it will be even easier, but you can also pull this off with a regular gimbal. And if you are not that tall, then you can attach something like a monopod to the bottom of the gimbal. But basically what you wanna do is you can either do this in two different ways. You can start very low to the ground and then move up, or you can do it in the opposite way around. So what I wanna do is I will start way up in the sky and then I will slowly, you know, pull the gimbal down to create this jib kind of shot. And yeah, I'll just try this out. I'm currently in the pan and follow mode so that my horizon always stays at the same position. So I start my recording. I'm pulling my phone way up, walking towards, and then I'm slowly bringing it down. Again, like I've said before, just always make sure that you check your recordings, make sure that you got the framing, make sure that it was smooth. And if not, just do it again. And the more you do this, the easier it will be for you and the better shots you will get and the quicker you will get those nice looking shots. And the last gimbal movement that I have for you today is called the spin shot. And basically I did have to change my gimbal for that because the Smooth Q4 could not do that. 
but my Smooth 5 can do that. And the Smooth 5 has a separate mode where you can do that. And basically it just spins in a 360 degree angle. So it spins, you know, until the battery is dead basically. And what I do is I basically pull the joystick and then I can start moving back or forward or whatever I want. And then it creates this cool uh, movement, the spin movement and what I would recommend is that you shoot these kind of styles for several different locations and several different shots and then you will have the opportunity to create some cool transitions in the post-production and some cool effects with it. You can do the swirl effect and all that kind of stuff. But there you have it guys. These are some of my personal favorite gimbal movements. Of course you can do variations of these and there are even more out there than these. But these are just some of the basics and if you master them you will be set to create some awesome looking videos. In case you would like to learn more about smartphone filmmaking, in case you really want to learn all the details and everything in far more detail then definitely make sure to check out smartphonefilmmakingpro.com. If you want to get a free taste the first link below that like button will be a link Link to a totally free video training where I share the top five secrets that you need to know to create some awesome looking videos with your smartphone. But that's it for today. I hope you enjoyed it and I'll talk to you guys in the next one.